What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We're back with another creature feature today and I think there's a fair few of you that are going to really enjoy this one. It was actually voted for by the Shark Bites members and it just about pipped the short fin Mako shark to the post. Shout out to the Shark Bites members by the way. Love you guys. If any of you guys out there still wanted to be a member, make sure you head to the Shark Bites homepage and check out the membership tab for all the details. Voting for the type of content that you want to see, including creature features, is one of the many perks that you're going to get as a Shark Bites member and all for less than the price of a coffee a month. Right, enough of the membership spiel. Black tip reef sharks, let's go. The black tip reef shark is a small to medium sized shark inhabiting the coastal waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Carcharhinus melanopterus is the genus species name for this shark, deriving from the Greek melas, which means black, and then pteron, which either means wing or fin. So that literally translates to black wing or black fin. I love word etymology. These little guys are thought to get to at least 1.8 meters in length, which is about the size of your average household door. So not so little guys after all. They're probably one of the most common sharks that you might see if you were swimming around a coral reef in the Pacific or the Indian Ocean. You'll have seen loads of clips before of black tip reef sharks swimming around those overwater villas in places like the Maldives. So they really do like hanging out in shallow water. So you're almost bound to see them if you're swimming around the Indian Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. But there's been some recent research that has suggested Black tip reef sharks are being found in the Mediterranean. It's thought a few individuals of the species migrated from the Indian Ocean into the Red Sea, up the Suez Canal, and then into the Mediterranean, which makes them Lesepsian migrants, which is basically applied to any marine creature that migrates through the Suez Canal. It's named after Ferdinand de Lesseps, who was the French engineer that basically was in charge of the construction of the Suez. So that's a little random fact that you can use in a pub quiz, probably. <laughs> Although I should point out that these are only anecdotal reports of black tip reef sharks in the Mediterranean and as of currently there's been no official population assessment of them there. And the reports are tending to suggest there's a cluster in the far east of the Mediterranean as opposed to anywhere else in the Med. My anecdotal report from Turkey was that I didn't see any black tip reef sharks while I was there. I mean, come to think of it, I didn't see any sharks at all while I was in Turkey so... Make of that as you will. Right, I think it's time to set the record straight on some species confusion here as well. I regularly see online a lot of news reports or articles that are confusing the black tip reef shark with the black tip shark. I know, confusing. Or take this discovery fact file right here. They've got a fact file all about black tip reef sharks, but some doofus at discovery has decided to hyperlink to a video about black tip sharks. Classic discovery channel nonsense. <laughs> But as you can see from these two photos here, they actually look quite different. Generally, black tip sharks are quite a bit bigger than black tip reef sharks, and then the reef sharks tend to have a sort of sandy beige color on their dorsal side. Black tip sharks are usually found in the cooler regions of the world, and then black tip reef sharks tend to prefer the tropics. The black tips on their fins are also really different as well, so the black tip reef sharks tend to have that whitish boundary to the black tips on their dorsal fin. Speaking of those black tips on the fins though, they're pretty cool. There have been some studies in recent years trying to see whether we can identify individual black black tip reef sharks by those black tips. And as you can see by these photos here, each of the black tips on both their dorsal and caudal fins have slight variations where they end with little individual nicks and spikes on them. In that study, they took nearly a thousand photos of black tip reef sharks over the space of five years and it revealed that there were only a total of 21 different individuals being photographed. I'm pretty sure there's also other studies out there that have used the fin markings for photo ID in black tip reef sharks as well, which means we can do a whole host of non invasive tracking studies on them. I.e. if we take a picture of an individual in one location and then it crops up in another photo in a different location, we know that that shark has moved from that location to that location. And all we've done is taken a picture of the shark. It's a really good alternative method to traditional tagging studies and it means less stress for the shark. As to why they got the black tip in the first place, scientists aren't 100% sure. I'd lean to it playing a role in camouflage at some point for them, which is often the case with body markings in shark species. Black tip reef sharks are known to show high levels of sight fidelity though, which is their tendency to stay in a specific area. Their relatively small home ranges is likely closely tied to their real dependence on coral reefs. Why would they decide to swim off somewhere else when they can stay on a nice healthy coral reef and survive just fine? And it's thought that some individuals stay on the same coral reef for several years at a time. I suppose you can kind of see that in the 
photo ID study that I mentioned earlier, where over the space of five years, the scientists just photographed the same 21 individuals over and over again. Female black tit reef sharks will tend to give birth on their home coral reefs, but strangely, some individuals will leave their reef and give birth in nursery areas that are pretty far away from their home. One study found that some female black tit reef sharks were traveling over 50 kilometers across deep ocean to get to these nursery areas, which is a pretty risky strategy if you're only a little black tit reef shark. The same study also found that wherever that female black tit reef shark gave birth, she would return to that site to give birth again year after year. And this might suggest that females are returning to nursery areas where they were born to give birth themselves, although I don't think there's any science to back that up yet. If they are doing that though, that would put them in the same group as other species like sea turtles or salmon who perform natal phylopatry, which basically means they return to the same beaches or the same river in which they were born. Females tend to incubate their young for around 12 months before giving birth to average litter sizes of between two to four pups which actually isn't that many. These little black tip reef shark pups will stick around the inshore coastal habitats for the first few years of their lives for safety from the larger predators that occasionally patrol coral reefs. These shark species normally feed on small teleos fish species, crustaceans, mollusks, cephalopods, anything you might find on a coral reef really. But there are some reports out there that they've also been found with sea snakes in their stomachs. See, I told you sharks were resistant to sea snake venom. Black tip reef sharks are also thought to be highly social sharks species, almost having friends within their communities. A really cool study was done a few years back by Johan Maurier in French Polynesia. They found a population of black tit reef sharks that totaled 133 individuals had organized themselves into four distinct communities. And the individuals within these communities weren't just occupying the same place at the same time, they were actually being social within them. The researchers found that some pairs of sharks were regularly spending time with each other and other pairs of sharks were actively avoiding each other. This is why I use the term friends with quote marks there because it's not quite friends, but it's still pretty cool. Johan Murier, who you'll probably gather now is a pretty prominent black tip reef shark researcher, also showed some really cool stuff on their wound healing capacities. So the first image that you're seeing here is a black tip reef shark with some wounds that were likely inflicted by another shark just in front of the first dorsal fin and those wounds healed healed fully within 40 days. And then the second here was a really deep wound that was thought to be inflicted from a boat strike, which closed in 27 days. And then the scar basically disappeared after a year. We know that lots of shark species have some pretty impressive wound healing capabilities, but that study right there shows it empirically, at least in black tip reef sharks anyway. This shark species is thought to be a pretty placid coral reef shark, generally keeping itself to itself and can be frightened really easily. Although there are plenty of reports out there that these sharks can get pretty aggressive aggressive, particularly when they're provoked. There's a bunch of clips online of black tip reef sharks getting really angsty around spearfishers, and some people have been bitten down the ears. I think the black tip reef shark has been responsible for 14 unprovoked bites on humans since the records began. But we now know that spearfishing comes under the provoked category, so those 14 bites weren't on spearfishers. I imagine if you included the provoked bites here, those numbers would be much, much higher. So although these guys might seem pretty chill, it's always best to keep your eyes on a black tip reef shark, especially if there's speared fish in the water. Because even though it's really unlikely that a bite from a black tip reef shark would be fatal, a bite from a 1.8 meter long black tip reef shark is still enough to cause some damage. Sadly, these sharks have experienced population declines in the last 50 years or so, somewhere between 30 to 50% globally. And although they do suffer from being caught, fisheries isn't actually the biggest threat to black tip reef sharks. It's actually a decline in their habitat quality that is thought to be having the most wide ranging impact on their population. I mentioned earlier about their dependence on coral reefs for their survival, and they really, really do depend on them. Declines in coral quality as a result of coastal developments or tourism activities is having a really negative impact on these sharks. Without a healthy coral habitat for these sharks to live in, they simply don't have a home to survive. That alongside coral bleaching as a result of climate change and warming oceans are without doubt the two biggest threats to this shark species, which sadly places them firmly in the vulnerable category on the IUCN red list for threatened species. It would be such a shame for us to lose this shark species from our oceans, just from a selfish point of view because they're up there with one of my favorites, but also from an ecosystem point of view as well. They're actually so far up there on my list of favorite shark species that I've got a pair of them tattooed on my back. 
Clyde and Seymour, if you're wondering their names. So there we go, guys. That's your creature feature for black tip reef sharks. Did you enjoy those facts today? Which one was your favorite? Make sure you let me know in the comments. Also, if I've not mentioned one of your favorite facts today about black tip reef sharks, then make sure you let me and everyone else know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. Show some love for those black tip reef sharks. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. And that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.